Whatever you live on, the deen that you live on, whatever you claim it to be, whatever you lived on, trust me, that's what you're going to die on. And don't you dare for a moment think that every person that gets cancer or every person that goes through a test like that, that it's a fault, you know, that yeah, it's a good thing for him. Sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes it's the opposite. You see, it happened to be good for him because he lived a life that was pleasing to Allah. He remembered Allah in good times. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembered him in times of difficulty. Trust me, I believe that Allah didn't give it to him simply because well, he's Muhammad Nagy and he happens to be special. No, he worked hard when things were good, when things were easy, when people usually forget Allah, when people usually don't have time for deen, when people usually don't have time for the masjid. He remembered Allah then, so therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembered him when he needed him the most. Allah then remembered him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stayed with him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to die bleedly less successfully. Something that many of us think here, yeah, but I'm Muslim, alhamdulillah, look at me, I'm leaving, I'm going, I'm coming. Of course I'm going to die on Tawheed. How do you know this? What proof do you have that you're going to die on this? Wallahi, I know people, Muslims, born Muslims, raised Muslims. I know people here in Sydney, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them cancer. And trust me, they didn't deal with it like how Muhammad dealt with it. And, you know, I'm going to share some stories with you and you might say, yeah, man, wow, that's a bad Muslim. Is he really? Because honestly, we're living the same life. One guy gave me a call and said, my brother, there's a 54-year-old Muslim, never prayed in his life, never prostrated once in his life. He said, my brother, he's dying. And he, we really think he's at his last stages. Please, this guy's a family friend. Yani, there's no one in the family, no one in the family that even prays. He said to me, please, man, do you think maybe you can go? I don't know, Allahu Allah, maybe you can say some words. Whatever. I said to me, khalas, whatever. Take my neck. Tell the family that I'll be there tomorrow. He calls me up a few hours later. He said to me, brother, please make sure you don't go visit that brother, man. I said to him, why not? He goes, as soon as he heard that a religious guy is going to come visit him, he lost it, bro. He lost it. In fact, he ordered the hospital that no one is to visit me from now on except my immediate family. He died two days after that. Now, I'm not saying he died on kufr or he... No, no, no. Wallahi, whatever he died on, that's between him and Allah. But because you live that life, you die on that. You live that life, you die on that. And I want you to think about your life. Because tonight I'm not, you know, I'm not questioning your faith. I'm not questioning do you love Allah. Habibi, we all talk to talk. But I love Allah, I'll die for Allah. You know, I love the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll die for his sunnah. Yep, 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 yep. Habibi, Allah doesn't look for lip service. Allah looks for action. You look at your life. Do you really love Allah? Do you really love Salah? Do you really love the Masjid? How do you know? But look at your relationship with it. If you're lucky, if you're lucky, if you're a wali of Allah, if you're a gun, if you're an absolute gun, you come to Jumu'ah's prayer. And not just any Jumu'ah. Wallahi, I get thank you, brother. Can you tell me what time is the khutbah there? I'm like, yeah, brother. So the khutbah starts at 1.15. He says, no, 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 no. As in what time do you pray the salah for the khutbah? I said, brother, I'm telling you, the khutbah is at 1.15. You guys, when the prayer is, you need to be there at 1.15. I said, brother, I'm not interested in the khutbah. What time is the salah? So I can double park. I come in, I pray my tina ka'at. I'm going to go, bro. You live on that deen, you die on that deen. You see, every one of us here, and I'm sure, wallahi, I don't doubt, every one of us thinks, brother, I'm the best Muslim. Wallahi, I love Allah. I love the Quran. Who do you really love the Quran? How much of it have you memorized? I'm 33. Uqsam Billah, I'm embarrassed to tell you how much Quran I've memorized. Wallahi, I'm embarrassed to tell you. You still know the same five surah of Quran that you memorized when you were six years old. Allahu Alam is made to read it properly. 30 years of life has passed you and you haven't increased a single verse of Quran. And you want to come play the violin and tell me how much you love the Quran. Habibi, look, you're not standing in front of me, you're standing in front of Allah. So don't think everyone that gets cancer, well, he deals with it nice. Brother, yeah, cancer is good. It gives you a time to repent. It gives you a chance. Yeah, I wish I get cancer. Allahu Akbar. Look how arrogant we are. Why is it that when you think cancer, why is it that when you think cancer, everyone buckles? 
that didn't Allah tell you he can die at any moment? Some of us have more yaqeen in the words of a doctor. Some of us have more yaqeen in the words of an unbeliever with a sheet and a tie and a little certificate on the back. Some of us have more yaqeen in his words than the words of your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Really, when you read the hadith and when you read the ayat of Quran that death can come to you at any moment, you don't panic. But when a doctor tells you, look brother, after looking at your tests, Allahu A'lam, we think you got about two weeks. <gasps> two weeks? Is that all I have? And you didn't react the same when Allah said you can die any moment. You didn't react the same. Every morning in the Sahih Hadith, what's the dua when you wake up in the morning? I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen next week. Last night! You were dead last night! You were dead last night! You were dead! Didn't change you. We should be questioning ourselves. That really, what deal am I really living? Because that's the deal you're gonna buy on, trust me. And when Allah takes your soul, when Allah takes your soul, trust me, the condition of your deal at that moment of death if you were to live for another million years, you weren't going to move an inch from that condition. You know, sometimes you hear about a brother who died without salah. Wallah, he had intentions to pray. Wallah, brother, you know, he's the... Habibi, he died without salah. And, if, and trust me, if he died without salah, that means that when Allah took his life, he was never going to pray. He was never going to pray. Where you go, that's how you're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The life you live, that's how you're going to die. Don't kid yourself. Don't look at others. But look at yourself. How many more messages do you have to hear? How many more funerals do you have to attend? I'm not doubting that we're Muslims. I'm not doubting. But what quality, bro? What quality? What quality? Today your kid gets a little bit sick. Of course, you don't say it on your tongue, but deep down in your heart. Brother, why did Allah do this to me for a man? I pay my zakat. What? So you pay zakat, what? Yani, what? Allah owes you something? No, but I'm just saying, like, alhamdulillah, I pray. You know, I give money in charity, and this guy, he doesn't pray. And his kids, there's nothing wrong with them. Yani, brother, why is Allah? Is that how you're going to stand in front of Allah with a heart like that? So please, my brothers, you know, Wallahi, we need to make a change. I'm jealous of this brother because he's one of the rare brothers that I was able to see. And again, of course, this is my opinion. I believe he died successfully. And for that, I'm jealous. For that, I'm not jealous. I'm actually dirty, bro. That's, that's, that's how jealous I am. Because I don't know what my fate is going to be. So please, my brothers and sisters, Wallahi, I really hope tonight can be a change in our lives. Enough. Enough. Allah, Allah, we've promised Allah again and again. Ramadan comes and Ramadan goes. Hajj comes and Hajj goes. And this person dies and this person goes. And this contract is finished. And we still keep giving Allah the same excuses and we haven't moved an inch. This needs to stop. We need to make a change. You need to better your life. Because the deen that you're on now, that's what you're dying on. How is your salah now? How? How is your salah? Allah says, successful are those believers. Successful are those believers whom in their salah they have, they have concentration. These people are successful. Habibi, I've been praying for over 10 years. I've been praying for over 10 years. And uqsam billah, I still till this day in my salah, Habibi, I think about anything and everything except Allah.